Hello everyone, this video will be an introduction to the transcription process of DNA to RNA. The central dogma in molecular biology states that DNA is used as a template for the synthesis of RNA and RNA is used as a template for the synthesis of protein. In the previous video, we have discussed the process of replication, where a DNA is used as a template for the creation of more DNA. So in this video, we now proceed with the next process, which is transcription. And this is where a DNA directs the synthesis of an RNA. Both the processes of transcription and translation are known as the gene expression. The gene expression pathway shows the link between the genetic information contained in the DNA and how this information is used to give the different traits and characteristics that are shown from different organisms. In its simplest form, the gene expression pathway has two steps. First is transcription, where DNA will make an RNA, and the transcription process has two products, the mRNA and non-coding RNAs. The second process or step is translation where the RNA, specifically the mRNA produced during transcription, would be used to make protein. There are a lot of different kinds and variations of organisms, so that would mean that they would also have a variation in their gene expression pathway. Among all of these organisms, the archaea is the one that is least studied. So that means that the details in its gene expression pathway are not well known. So we will concentrate our discussion in the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes or bacteria. Let's now discuss the general process involved in transcription. Transcription is defined as a process where a gene's DNA sequence is copied or in other words transcribed to make an RNA molecule. That is where the word transcription comes from because the main goal of transcription is to be able to copy or to transcribe or to duplicate a DNA in the form of an RNA. And when we say gene, this refers to a segment of a DNA or just a part of a whole DNA sequence. Again, there are two products in the transcription process. We have the mRNA and non-coding RNAs. The M in mRNA stands for messenger because these types of RNA would be the one to carry the message of the RNA from the DNA to the next step. mRNA is also called as the RNA transcript. These are described as mobile molecular copy of the original DNA sequence. And when we say mobile, it means that they are able to move because in eukaryotes, where transcription happens is in the nucleus. So after the processing of transcription, this RNA transcript should be able to move outwards or to move outside the nucleus so that it can be processed later on. So it's important that it is mobile. Mobile. In prokaryotes, on the other hand, since there is no nucleus, transcription happens inside the cytoplasm. In general, transcription has three steps, and this is initiation, elongation, and termination. These three steps are somehow similar to the steps in DNA replication. The first step is initiation, and this is the most important phase because this is the key control point. Without initiation, transcription will not start. It has two main players, the RNA polymerase and the promoter region. Initiation starts when the RNA polymerase attaches itself to a promoter region. RNA polymerase is the enzyme responsible for RNA synthesis, and this is the counterpart of the DNA polymerase used in DNA replication. To compare the two, there are more polymerase RNA polymerase molecules in a cell compared to DNA polymerase. 
The promoter region is the start site where initiation should begin. The counterpart of the promoter region in DNA replication is the site of origin. And to compare the two, there are more promoter regions in a DNA sequence compared to the sites of origin used for re DNA replication. Once the RNA polymerase attaches itself to a promoter region, it will convert the closed promoter complex to an open promoter complex by breaking some of the base pairs which are beside the initiation site. As we can see here, the promoter region is seen in a specific site and when the RNA polymerase binds to it, it would open the this region and this region is now called as the open promoter complex. This is where transcription will happen. We can say that initiation is complete when there is a stable attachment of the RNA polymerase to the promoter region and that synthesis of the new RNA has already started. There are differences in the transcription processes for prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, we need the small unit and the large subunit of the RNA polymerase and some of sigma factors to attach to the start site. But in eukaryotes, we need the RNA polymerase together with around 20 more additional factors to start the initiation complex properly. The promoter is a specific site in a DNA sequence where initiation should begin. This is made up of base pair sequences which are located at the beginning of the gene to be transcribed. So if these are the genes that you need to be copied or that you need to transcribe, the promoter region will be seen upstream or before these genes. So the RNA polymerase will bind to this site which is the promoter region. Therefore, the promoter gives a signal or a start signal on where transcription should begin. The enzyme involved in the transcription process is known as the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, but for short, we call it as the RNA polymerase. Another type of RNA polymerase is the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, but these types of polymerases are used for viral replication. The RNA polymerase is the central component in the initiation process of transcription. In this video, we can see the RNA polymerase as the green molecule creating or synthesizing new RNA. More information about the RNA polymerase is that it has several functions. First of its functions is that it serves to copy the information from the DNA to make an RNA. So that means this is for RNA synthesis. Another function of the RNA polymerase is that it separates the DNA strands. Unlike in DNA replication where another enzyme is responsible for separating the DNA strands. Another function of the RNA polymerase is that it zips back the DNA after it is used in the transcription process. As we can see here, the RNA polymerase moves forward, but the DNA part where the transcription has already been done is already closed back up. So that means only around 10 to 20 base pairs are exposed inside the open promoter complex of the RNA polymerase. Another thing you have to know about the RNA polymerase is that it can only build from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction like the DNA polymerase. So that means it will only use one strand of the DNA and this is the template or the anti-sense strand since this strand runs from the 3' prime going to the 5' prime direction because the RNA polymerase can only build from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction it needs to attach itself to the 3' prime end first of the template. 
the other strand of the DNA, which is the non-template or the sense strand or the coding strand, is not used in the transcription process. This strand is the one that runs from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. Our second step is elongation, and this is the actual process of copying the different bases. And of course, we use the complementary rule where A is attached to T and C is attached to G. That's why if thymine is seen on the DNA, we attach adenine for the RNA. And if we see guanine, we attach cytosine. But since we are creating an RNA and thymine is not seen on an RNA molecule, we attach uracil instead. So if adenine is found on the DNA template, uracil will be attached to the RNA strand. So that means the newly made RNA will not contain any thymine, but uracil instead. The third and last stage is termination, where the transcription process ends. Stop signals or terminator regions are seen in a part of the DNA sequence that gives the code for the termination of the process. When the RNA polymerase encounters this stop signal, it would then dissociate from the DNA and it would zip back the DNA and revert it to its original structure. And lastly, this would release the newly formed RNA. In prokaryotes, we call this RNA as the mRNA. But in eukaryotes, since there is a more complicated process, we call this RNA as the pre-mRNA. That ends this introductory video for the transcription process of the genetic code. The next video will now discuss the differences between the transcription of a bacteria and the transcription of eukaryotes. Thank you very much for watching.